The overall goal of the TRACE project is to develop traceability methods and systems that will provide consumers with added confidence in the authenticity of European food. It aims to do this by producing systems that not only trace food products, but also confirm their origin. So, in the TRACE project, um, what we aim to do is to develop method and validate method for the authentication of food products. But the, the TRACE project is a big project. It includes more than 50 different institutes. And it is an integrated project in the Six Framework program. Here you have the website where you can find a lot of information. So it's trace.au.org. And um, the general aim of the project is tracing the origin of food. And there, several groups are looking to different kinds of methods, spectroscopic methods, but also resonant magnetic methods and fast methods in order to assess the origin of food, like virgin olive oil, honey, uh, beers, but also meat. Food safety and quality, as well as the authenticity of food products, has to be guaranteed to protect the rights of consumers. Due to the increasing number of food fraud scandals and newly introduced regulations related to information about the origin of food on a label, delivery of efficient procedures is urgently needed with the aim of distinguishing authentic and fraudulent products. This relates to the overall goal of the TRACE project, which is development of traceability methods and systems that will provide consumers with added confidence in the authenticity of European food. Beer is an example of a processed cereal product that is consumed widely across the EU and the wider world. Brand identity is a key attribute of beers and often arises from long-standing brewing practices associated with a region, town, or even religious order. One such example of the latter is the Trappist beer produced in Belgium and the Netherlands. Trappist and non-Trappist beers have been used by the Trace project to develop original models enabling one to distinguish the origin of beer products. Uh, one of the aims of this work, the work that we have developed here, is how to discriminate using spectroscopic techniques between the different Trappist beers against the rest of the beers. Some beers are very easy to discriminate because they are very different and, but some of them are very difficult because they are very similar uh, way of production as the uh, Trappist beers. So the first aim is to discriminate between Trappist and the rest. The second is to discriminate between Rochefort, because it's the Abbey where we are working with, compared to the rest. And the third step will be to discriminate Rochefort 8, because it's the most produced beer in that Abbey against the rest of the beers. For this purpose, 280 samples were collected in two tranches. Two bottles of each beer coming from two different production batches were obtained. The Walloon Agricultural Research Center and the Institute of Chemical Technology, Prague, were chosen as representatives of the beer study team in which the Food and Environment Research Agency the Institute of Chemical Methodologies of the National Research Council of Italy and the Ashtown Food Research Center were also partners. All of these institutes have expertise in the analytical techniques used for authentication of food products. So uh, Trappist Rochefort is an authentic Trappist product. You can see the logo on the label and the conditions to be authentic Trappist product are three. The first one, the beer has to be produced inside of a Trappist monastery. So it must be a Trappist order and inside of the walls of the monastery. The second condition, uh, the beer has to be produced by uh, the supervision of the monks. And the third one is uh, that the benefits has to be distributed to uh, social associations and to uh, charity. We are in the brewing house. In this room, we produce the wort. The wort is the liquid before the fermentation. We start by the mashing in this kettle. We mix the malt and the water together. We heat at certain temperatures during certain times. 
After that, we go for the filtration in the tank upstairs. After that, we go for the boiling in the other tank. The work lasts a few hours, and at midday, the work is finished. The workers start here at 3.30 in the morning when the monks wake up. Well, the boiling is finished, and the wort is centrifuged to remove all the hops. After that, the wort is coming to the kettles here. During one week, the yeast will transform all the sugar and all the raw materials on alcohol and the CO2. The CO2 is the gas produced by the fermentation that we can see here behind me in the recipe. The gas goes through the water and we can see the powerness of the fermentation. We have to keep the yeast at a good temperature, that's why we have to cool those tanks. After one week, the beer goes back to the centrifuge to remove all the yeast and the beer it will be nearly ready for the filling in the bottle. We are not a huge uh, a brewery, so we need some uh, external uh, laboratories to uh, complete uh, our, uh, our results. And uh, as all the breweries, uh, we have to respect the, the HACCP rules and we have also to respect the traceability. The brewery has a small laboratory which carries out all necessary analyses to control the quality and safety of the beer production. And how can we confirm the identity of beer samples? The first step is the analysis of beer samples according to the developed analytical protocols. Within this study, the following analytical techniques were used. Near infrared and Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, Fourier transform Raman spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, solid phase micro extraction coupled with gas chromatography mass spectrometry, direct analysis in real time ion source coupled to mass spectrometry. The next step of the procedure applied for confirmation of the identity of beer samples is a selection of suitable markers, for example chemical compounds, MS ions and spectral data. Examples of records obtained by analysis of beer samples by mass spectrometric techniques and FT Raman spectroscopy clearly demonstrate how these techniques can be used to discriminate Trappist beer Rochefort 8, the most produced beer in Rochefort Abbey, and non-Trappist beer. So welcome in our laboratories. You are here in the quality department of the Walloon Research Center, which at the top level depends of the regional Ministry of Agriculture. And our, our main mission is the analysis of agricultural product for the composition residuals. And in this field, we applied a lot of spectroscopical methods like near infrared spectroscopy or mid infrared spectroscopy and Raman. And uh, in the TRACE project, we are responsible for the analysis of different products with spectroscopy. And of course, with spectroscopy, we have to also to apply quite a lot of chemometrics, which are also one of our fields of research. Here at the Jean Blue lab, the beer samples are introduced into the FT Raman spectrometer in glass tubes of an internal diameter of 12 millimeters and a length of 75 millimeters. The tubes are placed in a dedicated sample holder made of aluminium to enhance the precision of the sample position compared to a laser beam. The sample holder is placed in the sample compartment and the FT Raman spectra are collected. The 
The Institute of Chemical Technology Prague is the leading institution in Central Europe carrying out educational and research activities in almost all branches of chemistry. Since the 1990s, the Department of Food Chemistry and Analysis has built an enthusiastic scientific team which has been involved in many EU projects concerned with various aspects of food quality and safety issues. The main research focus is on the development and implementation of advanced analytical approaches enabling rapid and reliable screening of various quality or safety markers as well as sample authenticity. DART, TOF, MS-based metabolomic fingerprinting employed in this project is one of the challenges that have been introduced. Within the TRACE project we have developed two analytical approaches for assessment of beer sets. The first one was employing solid phase micro extraction, what is a procedure extracting uh, volatiles from beer headspace and uh, relying on gas chromatographic separation and mass spectrometric detection for their analysis. In this way we obtained around 45 volatile markers and we used neural networks for their hemometric analysis. The next procedure was very novel, employing ambient mass spectrometry. In this case, we used um, novel unique ion source, DART. DART stands for direct analysis in real time. The big advantage of this approach is you may analyze the beer directly without any sample preparation and you can get your results within a couple of seconds. Again, we have obtained uh, markers, quality markers, and we use them for hemometric processing. Both uh, recognition ability and prediction ability of our models were approaching almost 100%. It means we were able to distinguish uh, trappistic beers from the rest of beers. And I should say it was very successful and enjoyable work. Statistical analysis using suitable chemometric tools to develop models has to be used as a next step in order to classify beer samples. The study presented here has involved the application of a range of analytical techniques and several different chemometric approaches to discriminant model development. It seems that application of either the vibrational spectroscopic or the solid phase micro extraction coupled to gas chromatography mass spectrometry techniques using new technologies developed within the framework of the TRACE project may produce models of an accuracy level suitable for screening large numbers of beer samples.